Hello, everyone. Welcome to Enjoy the Book of Life. We're here today with another specialty tool, this time examining the type of literature known as prophecy. Prophecy is primarily found in the major prophets, the minor prophets, and then in the New Testament in the book of Revelation. Now, the distinction between major and minor has nothing to do with the message. It just simply has to do with the length of the book. We've got longer books, uh, Isaiah, Jeremiah, and the such, and then we've got minor prophets like Joel and Amos, and they're just a little bit smaller. And uh, not only are we going to find these tools helpful when looking at those pieces of literature, those books, but all through the scriptures, whenever anything prophetic is being said, these prophecies. So let's jump in and look at these tools. Hopefully they will give you guidance as you go into these sections, um, but also hopefully it will encourage you and, and inspire you to go in and start digging around and looking for treasures in prophecy. First, the first specialty tool is to identify the purpose. Why is the prophet saying what he is saying? Now, if you want to go all the way back to episode three of Enjoy the Book of Life, my dad and I, we talk about these four purposes in detail. I'm going to give them to you now, though. The first one is a present need that Sometimes the prophets, when they're talking to the people, it's something that they need right then. We think of the book of Haggai. His first message to the people is that they need to rebuild the temple. They've, they've paused the construction project. They went and rebuilt their own house and uh, really just forgot about it and, and have been living their lives, and it's still in shambles. And so the prophet has come and said, this needs to be a priority. So something that is present need. Uh, the second one is the warning of judgment. We think of Nahum or Obadiah or Jonah, this judgment that's coming. And so this warning of that judgment. Then we think of uh, the third one, and that is Messiah's coming. And this is a theme. We find it in Psalms. We find it all sprinkled through the Old Testament, not just in the prophets, but it's definitely there as well. And then finally, the future kingdom. And very often, it, it the these four purposes, they can be sprinkled and interwoven through the books. And so it can be a little confusing because he's talking about Zerubbabel, and then he's talking about this kingdom, this great kingdom. And you say, well, was that really Zerubbabel? Or is he talking about a future kingdom there? He started talking about a present need, and then he ends up talking about a future kingdom. So making sure that we have these four purposes clear in our mind so that when we're reading, we can uh, clearly identify what he's talking about and when. So it helps differentiate those. The second specialty tool is to distinguish between historic and predictive messages immediate and immediate parts, and perspective due to it not necessarily being chronological. Okay, so a lot there. The first is historic and predictive messages. There are some messages given by the prophets that are merely historical. Things that happened, uh, they, they've happened, they're over, they're done with. Sometimes these have a predictive nature that they're looking forward into time okay others have immediate and immediate parts so uh, we think of the word immediate that the message that they have it's about to take place right the judgment on Nineveh by Nahum all right so Nahum he gives this and the judgment is coming and the judgment came and then we have perspective due to it not necessarily being chronological. So one good little example here is uh, the past prophetic tense. Okay, so uh, God says to Abraham, I have made you a father of many nations. Okay, now at this point, there were not many nations. But God says, I have done this. So it's past tense, but it's prophetic, right? We see a similar thing 
in Romans 8, where he says, whom he justified, he glorified. And glorified is past tense. So it's a past, but yet prophetic tense. It's as sure as completed. So even though uh, it hasn't happened to me yet, in God's perspective, it's in the past tense because he promises that it will be done. He, it, it has been done in that sense of a past prophetic tense. Our third specialty tool is to be aware of Hebrew language and idiom differences. Now, this is true also when we looked into the poetry books, and then uh, if you haven't seen that episode, uh, check that one out, looking at the specialty tools for Hebrew poetry. But here, for example, in Amos, God says to them, I gave you cleanness of teeth. Okay, speaking about all these cities, and what he's talking about is famine, right? When, when you eat your food, that's what messes up your teeth. And if you have clean teeth, that means you haven't eaten. And so just that little idiom, it's a, it's a little, um, not a play on words, but something that means something else, an idiom. And so here he's saying, I gave you cleanness of teeth. We just need to be aware of what that means. Otherwise, it can be quite confusing. Our fourth specialty tool is to be aware of and identify types of fulfillment. So, for example, you can have full fulfillment. So, when we read Psalm 22, speaking of the crucifixion, and it is fully fulfilled in the death of the Lord Jesus. Then we have partial fulfillments, like Joel 2, matching up with Acts 2. So in Joel 2, Peter says, this is that which Joel said. And certain things that Joel said took place in the times of Acts 2. However, not everything Joel said took place during that time. And so that would be a partial fulfillment. We think, uh, again, of the Lord Jesus. He opens the scroll and he reads the day and he stops short in his uh, reading just before it says in the day of judgment of our and the day of judgment of our god and so there he is showing us that this prophetic portion the first half of the sentence that was for right then but then he closes the scroll and the day of judgment that's for another time this is just a partial fulfillment of where he was reading in isaiah and so the the remainder of that is for another day. And when we see in Revelation, he opens the scroll again. So he closed the scroll, and then he's going to open again. And when he opens the scroll, that starts the day of judgment of our God. So we have full fulfillment, partial fulfillment, and then we have double fulfillment. And so one example here would be the uh, abomination of desolation, where we can look at a historic event and say this is when the temple was desolated. Uh, but then we can look into the future with the Antichrist, and we know that uh, that will happen again. So this that would be an example of a double fulfillment. Uh, number five, we have to identify when characters stand in for another character. And this is, um, well, one example would be like Zerubbabel, standing in for the Messiah, in Zechariah 4, he stands in again at the end of the book of Haggai uh, 2. And so we have, it It call, It call says Zerubbabel, and it's talking about a historic person, but it's really the in its truest sense, in its truest meaning, it's actually speaking about the Messiah there. And so identifying when that is, is very important. And uh, we, there are clues that say, well, no, this is not going to be Zerubbabel, this, this signet ring uh, of Jehovah that can only be the Messiah. And so finding those little clues that say, oh, I think even though he's talking about Zerubbabel, really he's talking about the Messiah there. And then number six, to trace people, places, things, and ideas through these different texts. So one example there would be this idea of Elijah as the forerunner. And of course, we can trace that all the way into the Gospels and uh, into the life of John the Baptist. 
So all of these different tools, again, they're, ju they're just here to give you some extra direction. So when you're reading and you see something a little confusing, hopefully these will give a little bit of guidance, a little bit of help, uh, and hopefully some new avenues to explore so that now when you're reading, you're trying to figure out what is the purpose here or, ooh, that was fulfilled. Was that fully fulfilled? Was that partially fulfilled? Is there a double fulfillment promised here? And so identifying these different areas uh, can help increase your area of study and hopefully for you to better enjoy the book of life.